Okay, let's continue with the quotient rule. So let's, um, let's go ahead and try it with uh, part C. Okay. Um, and again, I don't care if you want to go off of this or if you want to go off the same. It gives you the exact same thing. Uh, so whether you do the low d high or the derivative of the top times the bottom, it's the same thing, just in a different order. Uh, so you can use whatever you want. Um, I'll typically go with this, but you can go with this one too. Okay, so the derivative of the top is just 8 times the bottom minus now the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply that out. 8x squared minus 8 minus 16x squared. And we're going to leave the denominator the way it is for now. We'll see if we need to do anything with it later. So just combine like terms. So negative 8x squared minus 8 all over x squared minus 1 quantity squared. And if you wanted to, you can pull off a negative 8. So you have an x squared plus 1 all over x squared minus 1 squared. And whether you have it like this or the factor version, that's all you can do. Nothing's going to cancel. You can factor... Uh, x squared minus 1 out, but it's not going to give you any factor that cancels that x squared plus 1 off. Okay, part D, this one's usually an interesting one for calculus students. So we have a quotient, 8 over x squared, so we're going to follow the quotient rule and see what happens. And if you guessed it, we're going to be illustrating a point uh, in a moment. So let's just do the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top, which is 0, times the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom, times the top, all over the denominator squared, so x to the fourth. Uh, so let's simplify that out. Well, anything times 0 is 0, so psh, that's gone. So negative 16x all over x to the 4th. Simplify into negative 16 all over x to the 3rd. Okay, so that totally worked. Um, but you could have done this problem before this section. Like this right here, we saw that in section three point. Uh, 3.2 and when we started using the power rule because you can rewrite this function uh, in a different way and then the power rule would apply. So the function can be rewritten as 8x to the negative 2 and then the derivative just negative 16x to the negative Third. So you get the exact same result. So if you're, if you ever have a quotient like this, where either the top is a constant or the denominator is a constant, you can bypass the quotient rule. Like you don't need to use it because there, it's really just going to be a power rule. Now, if you totally forget, you know you're still going to get the same answer. Uh, but when you go through the quotient rule. Whenever you do the derivative of that constant, it's going to give you a zero and it's going to knock out one of those terms. So the power rule is definitely faster uh, than the quotient rule when you have a situation like this. All right. Let's try this next one. So g of x equals that. So if we notice, we have a constant in the denominator. So it's like the the previous example, uh, I don't need to use the quotient rule with this. I can, but it's a little bit faster if I don't. So there are a couple ways you can think about it if you have that constant in the denominator. One of them is you can just break it up. It's like 1 eighth um, <clears throat> x to the third minus 1 eighth sine of x 
plus one eighth uh, e to the x. Oops, and that's not g prime, that's g. So you can break them up into multiple terms if you need to and do the derivative of that. So 3 eighths x squared minus 1 eighth cosine of x plus 1 eighth e to the x. And they have the same denominator again, so you can you know put it all back into one fraction if you wanted to. And there you go, you can call it a day. Now the other way you can do it too is if the denominator is a constant, if you notice that denominator is still the same denominator in the derivative. So if the denominator is a constant, then you can just do the derivative of the top. So 3x squared minus cosine of x plus e to the x over that constant. Uh, so I mean, you can go whichever way you want, it just depends on what you see and what you have. All right, now this last one, g of x equals tangent, uh, we don't have a rule for tangent, at least not yet. Because remember, tangent is really a quotient of sine over cosine. Ha ha, now you've got something to go off of. Okay, so the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the denominator squared. Okay, so let's clean that up. So cosine squared plus sine squared all over cosine squared. Well, my trig identities um, say I can take that numerator, cosine squared plus sine squared. That's really just one. So all of those identities that you guys learned in your trig class or pre-calculus or wherever, uh, this is why you spent so much time learning them and going over them is because they do tend to show up uh, from time to time in calculus. All right, and then one over cosine squared is secant squared. Okay, so this is the proof for tangent. Uh, to get us derivative. You don't have to go through this every single time you see tangent. Um, so as a rule, we can use the quotient rule to give us the other derivatives of the other four trig functions. So let's go ahead and just write them out. Uh, and then you can just go ahead and use the derivatives from this box. The quotient rule is how you would prove it. You don't need to prove it unless it asks you to. All right, so the derivative of sine is cosine derivative of cosine is negative sine, we already know those. The derivative of tangent, we just proved is secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. And the derivative of cosecant, negative cosecant, cotangent. So here are the derivatives of your six trig functions. So you're definitely going to want to know those because they are going to come up uh, a lot. Uh, so you're going to want to memorize them uh, to the best of your ability. All right, so let's do example four, then we'll stop the video here and then then we'll look at higher order derivatives in the next one. Okay, find the equation of the line tangent to the graph of secant at the point pi over three comma two. So t uh, find the equation of the tangent line. So tangent line means derivative, because I need the slope of it. So the derivative of secant, secant tangent. So plug in the x value of the point So secant of pi over three is two, tangent of pi over three is root three. So that is your slope. And then use the point slope formula to give you the actual line. So y minus 
2 equals 2 root 3 times x minus pi over 3 and then just solve for y. So y equals uh, 2 root 3 times x uh, minus 2 pi root 3 over 3 plus 2. And it looks weird, but there's the equation of your line. Okay, so let's stop the video here, and then uh, we'll look at higher order derivatives in the next video.